Hello, this is Mike Pucciarelli, and tonight's webinar will be talking about all the equipment I use in my still life photography. This is all the equipment. Some of it you buy from a store, some of you can make yourself. I'll talk a lot about that throughout this presentation. So our agenda, I'm gonna show you three tables that I use, and I'm gonna show electronic equipment. And then I'm gonna talk about, you know, props and lighting modifiers. There's a lot to cover in this presentation. And, you know, here's a lighting modifier page. Um, to add dramatic light without using electronic flash, I'd recommend using a mirror or a silver or gold cards or silver reflectors. You now you could also, for soft light, you can use white reflectors and white cards. Black cards are great for taking away light. Black cards are great for taking away glares and product photography. You know, black cards are great for helping you control a light when a strobe gives out too much light. Then there's, you know, plastic fusion scrims. In many, to all tables, there's many ways to use it, plastic fusion scrims to soften the light. And then there's colorful gels that you can change the color of a background with the good gel. With, you cover the light with the gel, you can change the color of a subject with the gel. You just simply, you know, place the gel over the strobe. And then there's also medium sized you know, white plexiglass sheets where they could be used as small miniature white plexi tables. They could also be used as, you know, to make the light softer when you use a strobe. In a cinephil, where this is like black aluminum foil. This is great for creating like a snoot or to make the light more narrow from a strobe. And there are many ways to use cinephil. You could attach the cinephil with spring clamps, with small spring clamps. You could do the same with maybe with small C or G clamps. I like to use spring clamps. You could also do this with, you know, duct tape or clothespins. And a lot of this material here, you can buy at an art store or at a hardware store. You can also buy some of this, you know, at a drug store. You can buy all this at, you know, online retailers like Amazon.com, Home Depot, or Michael's or Plaza Arts. The white plexiglass table I still use today. And this table has been out of stock a while. So there are other tables available, both at BH and Amazon. Just be careful of the price on these tables. Know what you're getting. That the more expensive ones are the Manfrotto frames. And this table is not the Manfrotto frame, but it's a good table and I still use it today. This is the black plexiglass table where I have two saw horses and a plywood, and I have cloth underneath the plexiglass so it doesn't scratch a plexiglass. And then I have, and in many ways, you use a scrim on this. This is at a 45 degree angle. This is great for photographing like a watch, a flat object. Now, if you want to use glass, like a gla glass of water, and you would have the scrim at a 90 degree angle. And it all depends on what you're trying to do with your photograph. And two things are important here, you know, angle the scrim and also angle of the camera. And there are many ways to use this with one light, two lights. You'd also, you know, use white cards and mirrors to add in light too. This is the one light painting table where you just have 
a cube, you can buy this in any hardware store or Target department store. And then I have a dark or black piece of wood. And I do this in the dark. And I'll talk about the Lumen flashlights later. And I recommend using a filter. And I'll talk about that later. And sometimes, you know, you could create a very small, you know, filter with called a slick snoot, where you, you just spread a very thin layer of light. And I recommend using, you know, a white reflector with the light, this will soften the light. You'd also do the same thing with scrims. And these are the strobes I use. These are just strip boxes. And these lights are two times more powerful than the lights in the middle. And these are called the Light RX1 flash head. And these, these are double. And it's double the power of these. These are my continuous lights where good floodlights are great for still light photography. You do a lot with these, you can control the bulbs, you know, contrast light by turning the switches on and off. You could use this also with a softbox, all these. So I have several, you know, two of these, two of these, I have six of these, but they're great for adding light when flash is not suitable. This is one way to hold a gel over a light. You have spring clamps. You could also do this, well, these are actually armature clamps, but you could also do this with spring clamps. You could also do this with C-clamps and clothespins. We could also have you know, the soft box, you just put the gel right on top of the soft box material, like I did here, but now this is at a 90 degree angle. And these are um, clothespins that are holding it together. These are just C or G clamps. These are great for holding stuff. And this is holding the scrim at a 40 degree angle. You could also do this with big string clamps. And this is holding the scrim in a 90 degree angle where it's C or G clamps, where you could also do this with medium or large, you know, spring clamps. These are C or G clamps, both are good. So another way to use spring clamps you want to flatten the curb, depending on what you're going to do, but this may not be the greatest. It depends how flat you want the curve. The same thing with big C or G clamps. And this is either a, I think it's a plexiglass sheet where I'm holding it up and the light is up behind this where the spring clamps are holding it up. And these are, I think, are the three inch clamps. I recommend the three inch or five inch for holding things up. These are spring clamps. It's to hold things up. You can do the same with CG clamps. Some people use alligator clamps. They're a lot more expensive than these. But as I just like to use, you know, the spring clamps. And these are the bigger spring clamps, like I think it's a five to seven inch. These are big, the hard open, but these are great for holding large stuff. And these are scrim walls where if you have a strobe, to soften a light, or if you just want to have a strobe, you could have a silver wall to bounce in light or a white wall. 
And these are white walls where if it showed fire from here, a bounce in light and the soft light from here. And if it strobes over here, a bounce in light in the soft way here. These are silver walls, and I like to use, you know, silver walls when I do food. You can also do this with gold walls, but I like the silver walls better. And these are, you know, black cards or a black wall. These are great for blocking too much light or when a strobe bleeds too much light. It's good for controlling the glare. These are just, this is like a white foam board wall. This is how I use a scrim where the, it just place the scrim. Sometimes you use stamps, sometimes you use a bucket. There are many ways to do it. And you just place the strobe behind the scrim. And you can also do this with a double scrim too, where you have two scrims. This is just bouncing in light with the white film board in a soft way. These are all my stands. And these are the bags. These bags come with these two big boom stands. These I had to buy at Home Depot, only five bucks. They're filled with, all filled with rocks. Later on, I'll talk about concrete blocks. This is one way to use a concrete block. I have big boom stands, I have smaller boom stands, I have three foot stands, I have ground stands. They all come in very handy. I recommend the heavier lights for these big boom stands and the soft, the not so heavy light with these smaller boom stands. These are silver white reflectors. You know, silver reflector is great for bouncing in light in a dramatic way. And a wide reflector is great for bouncing in light in a softer way if the cell reflector has too much contrast. These snoots are great for softening the light, also for making the light more narrow. And you want to make sure you always you want to use the grid. And these snoots come with gels where you just put the gel and they'll affect the color, turn the color to the color of the gel. These are great for adding light at a 40 degree angle just to bring out you know, the text of a product in a product shoot. These are great crates. Just they're good for holding things. They're also great for holding like a foam board. The same thing with a bucket. There was a time when I was driving the Brook Gardens, Brookside Gardens, and I found one on the road. It's a property of Verizon. Please return the Verizon. So that I bring it to Verizon, and I said I can have it, and I took it and I cleaned it. It was good. It was a nice crate. And these are all the homemade still life tables where if you want to do drooly, you could do the small ones. This is like, a, you got a miniature still life table, you got a tall table. And they're great for using, you know, for photographing still life at a higher, depending on what you want to do at a high angle, low angle. I've used all these, but most of the times I use this one, but they're all very good to use. And these are all made out of, you know, shelves, screw brackets. The homemade shelf rack. I also made more holes, so I put more holes because I now, I now use this to store all my uh, foam boards and other boards or blackboards. It also uses as, you know, a black cloth background. And these are cubes, and you've seen this in other uh, parts of this presentation. By the Target or 
Walmart. And these are great for creating like a small plexiglass table or a white plexiglass table. Just a mint block. The block is great for holding up a foam, you know, it, this, you know, the groove, which is here, it's great for holding up like a foam board if you want to do a, like a shoot where you want to show off the edges where you have strip boxes aiming from the back at a 40 degree angle. This black foam board is great for creating like a nice dark background. And then like in the other photograph, they're great for storing stands. And these are stools. These chairs were falling apart, so I decided to cut off the bad parts and it served as a stool. And the same thing with these. And I, you know, I brought this to Goodwill. They wouldn't take it because of the scratches, but you know, it was falling apart. So I decided to cut off this part and turn it into a bigger stool. And anyway, it's easy to put this under a plex table if you want to raise the light. You can have a model sit on this um, stool. And this is great for creating like a small plexiglass table with either black or white plexiglass. So there are many ways to use a stool in still life photography. And this is just a rack where, when I bought a dishwasher, it came with this. I did not want to throw this away and I screwed on this piece of wood. And this is great for, you know, placing like a light, a light under a plexiglass table. And you also have a light at a 40 foot angle if you want to bring up the reflections of a product. This is a big B. This is made out of um, plastic canvas and also stretcher frames from Plaza Arts. And this is great for, you know, creating like a dark background and This is great for making the room really dark when I do light painting during the day. And I bought these, you know, plastic canvas at, you know, Office Depot where the store is having a, cl a clearance sale and I bought them off for a great price, a gradation sale. And these are expansion poles where if you want to hold something like the, um, the scrim, you just, you know, you, you, you just make it go to the ceiling and you make it tight and it's very firm. These are great and portable. These could be used wherever, you know, you have like a 10 foot height of a room. These are poles, these are one inch poles. These are great for attaching, you know, many kinds of backgrounds. And the poles could be used on the rack, the homemade rack that I showed before. And amazing, there are many ways to use poles with, you know, black flex table where the scrim is at a 40 foot angle leaning on the poles. And these poles are great, they can be expanded. You can hold, you know, a black, and like I said, you can have a black plastic fusion background at a 40 foot angle at a, at a black flex table. And these poles could be expanded if you want to have a very large background or maybe like a homemade rack that I showed before. These are all my lenses. Most times you use a prime lens. I've been using a lot more prime lenses than non-prime lens. First, they're cheaper. Second of all, they're sharper focus. And it's just a matter of moving when you zoom. And I've used all these prime lenses. They all do a great job with the sharp focus. Like if you want to use a wide angle, use a 24 meter. If you want to use a very narrow telephoto, use 85. In the medium, I'd use a 35. 
in the 50 meter. You know, that's a standard telephoto. And they're all very good. I mean, they all have aperture of 2.8 or less. And they're all very sharp. And they all have the ISM image stabilization. Maybe except for this one, but they are all very good. And I'll talk about image stabilization all focus later. Sometimes I use, when I go on a nature hike, I use my 7200 to 100 for nature or a waterfall. But so these are all the camera lenses I use. I still use my Canon 70, it's a good camera. Now we're going to talk about image stabilization. And it's best to use this feature when you're not using a tripod. When you're using a tripod, you want to turn it off because the, the photograph could come out better. The pixelization could be next stuff. In many ways, you use uh, manual focus where outdoor ring a lot, I use autofocus. But at light painting, as you pre focus, I have it at autofocus, but then once I get a good sharp focus, then I switch the camera to manual focus so that the sensor doesn't have to think when I press the shutter. You can also use autofocus for you know, focus jack. And these are computer cases I purchased at Micro Center. Um, one of them I got, you know, good $20 off, but I didn't get the other one off, but they're really good. And they're three times less than the camera cases, and they're great. I could fit, I've used these for years. They're very sturdy and tough, and they don't take up a lot of space, and they're really great. They're compact. And this is, you know, for the Elecom strobes, this is the transmitter for the strobes. This communicates the wireless signals to the strobes. And this takes two batteries. And it's four different grips, there's 16 different channels. You can use this with the wire, without the wire, connect to a flash. And then the 4X20, this is a regular Canon flash. This could be used in place of this. You got to make sure you have it a manual. And this takes four AA batteries. And again, it's in four channels. It was also put in three different grippings. So, you know, the difference in the batteries and channels and stuff like that. But they're both very effective to use. They both could be used well as, you know, a wireless transmitter. Been using a wired cable release for years. I still use it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I press the shutter very firm, but you know, use it comfortable with. But I'm also using, I'm gonna talk about another tool I use when I do light painting. I'll talk about that very soon. You might be able to use your you know cell phone as a type of release. I mean, technology is really exploding. This is the wireless. A shutter it has a nice inner valve meter where it's the format 99 colon 99 colon 99. This has 30 possible channels to work with, and anything that the wired uh, remote could do, this could do better. You have a lot more flexibility, and this cable will work in most, you know, camera hot shoes. And this is designed for the Canon. The thing about this is it's 80 meters plus in the wireless in a large remote distance you know, situation. It's a very powerful thing to use. You wanna make sure you put the batteries, make sure the batteries charge. You wanna make sure you turn it on, the equipment turns on. This is tripods, they usually use a cable release or the Remote shutter, these are both. It's for a landscape because I took this thing out if you want to get really high and low on the ground. 
is my architecture one where you want to raise this, you could raise it. Let me use something else from a still life, but I'm at my studio here. This is a camera stand, and I always use a cable release, or I can also use a remote cable that I showed earlier. I like to use either 100 or IS200 with the camera stand. And, and well, a lot of times I use, you know, cable release for light painting or other still life. And then I'm also, you know, like when I light paint a car, I use that remote shutter. I recommend using a cable release so you keep the cable still. I'd rather you do that than a firm press on the shutter because you could move the camera. You could have slight image blurriness. Many ways to clean a flex table, both black and white. Uh, I like to use Novus. A lot of times they just use one for a good shine, twos for light scratches, threes for heavy scratches. You can buy this at any you know, online store. If you use two, make sure you end up with one. If you use three, then use two, then one. But a lot of times they just use one for a great shine. And the bottom photograph is great. Well, this is great for blowing off dust on the black flex table. And it drives all still life photographers crazy that there's only to be dust particles on the black flex table. So that's why you gotta blow it off really well. Or I recommend using, you know, a Novus one uh, with the linen cloth for a jet, for it like it jumped the white. You wanna make sure you uh, polish in circles in both the white flex table and the black flex table. But Sometimes you just need to blow air to get all the dust particles, so you have less to clean out in Photoshop. The small mirrors, you put these mirrors on armature clamps. These are mirrors you can buy at CVS. You have the folding arm to hold it at an angle. This is duct tape. You go to Home Depot, right? Even safely to buy this. And this is armature wire. It's the hold stuff, but they use this a lot during the early film days when they didn't have Photoshop. These are CAG clamps. It's great for holding, you know, like scrims to an expansion pole like I showed before. These are great. These spring clamps are great for like holding up like a small wall on a table. It can be a small foam wall, a black wall. And, you know, these, uh, These unclothed pins, you could just put, use, attach the strobe, the gels to the strobe. These are gels. I bought these at Plaza Arts. You could put them over the soft box of a strobe, which is a great job changing the color, both the background and subjects. And these are silver cards. You're great for like in dramatic light. If you use a gold card, this is great for adding in light with the like yellowish tint. This is Cinefill. This is great for putting on a sloot. This is film draft paper. This is great for play, creating like a fusion background to make the light softer. Now it's just a matter of feathering the strobe to get the effect that you like. These are all my scrims. You can buy like this at like an art store or Target. And I bought these stretcher frames at Plaza Arts and I bought the plastic fusion at another store. You know, black plexiglass sheets is great for, you know, black, black, Plexiglass work, same thing with the white plexiglass. Then you have clear plexiglass. There's ways you use clears where you want to put you know, something like in a floating motion, like food. You have like a white foam board about a foot underneath, or maybe a soft box. And it really does a good job of keeping the background white. You can use it with the white foam board or stroke. 
And these are big white cards, which are great for creating you know, white backgrounds, or you can create a lay background, a gray background, if you have the light aim low. And these are great for bouncing in light, like you use this thing of folding here to bounce in light with, in food photography. These are black cards. These are great for creating a dark background, where if you want to, if a straw bleeds too much light, you want to use like, a foam board to, you know, take out too much, or to take out the glare. And these back things are, you know, bees. These are great for creating like a black, dark background or just making a room dark when I light paint. So this is, you know, this is a nice light paint to do light painting comes with battery, it also comes with a plug and you have a switch in the back where you can curl the dimmer. You can use barn doors that make it more, you know, narrow. And you can use gels to change the color, but I don't do that. I could use this gel up here to make the light softer. It operates in six AA batteries and it also has a horseshoe if you wanna set it down around a tripod. The light is bounced to about 65K and there's 216 small LED lamps on this light, which it's a powerful light. This is even a bigger light where you have 600 LEDs where the light is also balanced at 55, 56K. I only use a power supply in this. It's a three prong. I never use a VMI battery. Never knew that someone did, but comes with a D-tab connection, but the VMI battery may be more expensive than the light. And this diffusion sock, it's great for softening the light. The light's too powerful. These are nice defiant lights where if you want to light paint a car, this is great. It creates a nice beam of light. Comes with the battery. This is a great light. You could use it for several hours, maybe. Make sure you have the battery charged. And like I said, it's great for light hitting a motorcycle or car. This is Max Millum 3, where if you want to do some landscape light painting, this is a very powerful light. And it could do many hours. The battery is a very long battery light. Make sure you charge battery, especially if you haven't used it in a while. It is like a car charger. This is the charge and the battery is inside. And these are all my, you know, lead light, lead light filters. They're just, you know, plastic, you know, foil pipes at Home Depot, and you get a hacksaw, and you make a 40 degree angle cut, and they're held together by duct tape. And these are great for softening the light and the lead flashlight. So make sure you go to the hardware store that you know the diameter of your flashlight, and you buy the corresponding pipe that has the diameter of the flashlight. And the filters really help control or make the light softer. And I recommend these filters for light painting anything small, like a collectible or a vase or like even an interior of a car. But then when you light paint a car on the outside, it's hitting the ball game, it's a lot darker. I just recommend like the defiant like I showed before. And you know, the more you control the lighting with the filters or whatever technique you use, you know, you're making masking in Photoshop, you know, a lot easier. And all you do is you put, you know, the foil filters on the flashlight. And when you go back and forth in a pendulum motion, and you want to exercise more texture, you go slowly. You want to exercise less texture, you go quicker. And you might want to light paint in front of a scrim or right reflector so you don't have harsh glares. You want to think of the impact by adding light maybe one or two directions. You want to think about the edges of whatever you're trying to light paint, a vase, a mug. You want to make sure they work 
Test them out from time to time. You want to make sure you shoot with a full, healthy battery. Make sure all your electronic equipment works before you go out and shoot. Do an extra set of uh, batteries for the flashlight and also for the camera. And I recommend, depending on what your light paint, if it's something in the city, you could use a cable loose. But if it's something outside, like a car, I recommend using like a remote loose that comes with the timer and other stuff. These are the light looks on with the filters. They'll soften the light. And you light paint differently and feel differently about light painting. And by using filters, you'll probably mask easier in Photoshop or just, it's easier to work with a you know, regular exposed image than an overexposed image. When I'm trying to use overexposed images when doing Photoshop work. And just, I recommend using filters. See how no filters, see how harsh the light is. I recommend using a filter to make it light softer. These are camera cases for the um, filters and LED flashlights, and they're three times less expensive than the other camera cases I mentioned. And I bought this at Micro Center, and they're great for selling the stuff. They're sturdy and tough, and they don't take up a lot of space. And these may be smaller than the other cases, but they're still great. And these are, you know, LED flashlights, and I have even more, but have doubles of each and you know it's very high the lumen power here like 330 3300 but then the police one only has 50 but then maybe this says 50, 60 120 and these probably have like 50 or 100 lumens and these have like 2330 3300 lumens the light. And there's some of our photography groups. The groups are growing every day. We've also organized several meetup photography clubs. I like to take outdoor shoots with people. You're welcome to join any group or any Facebook group. This is my Facebook page. This is my Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram, just at Michael Pucciarelli. And this is my YouTube channel. This is where I'm going to store this recording. And here's my Twitter, and here's my Find Our website. Also, here's my portfolio. So, if you have any questions, you can always email me at mpicturealr2016 at gmail.com. Or if I connect on Instagram, just feel free to send me a message or through you know, LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook. Maybe, you know, maybe consider liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I just want to thank you for letting me give this webinar. If you have any questions, again, you can email me, like I just said. Thank you so much for listening.